So this is the kerosene service I constructed for the IOV burner, which is sitting out there that I restored. That is one of very few IOV burners left in the world that work, especially of the first order size. We'll go out to take a look at it in a minute. This basically consists of a kerosene tank. This is an original Chance Brothers item. Kerosene in there up to a certain level with compressed air over it. There's a draw pipe which goes down inside there. Kerosene is pushed down by the air and forced up the draw pipe through this head, which I machined and ported and all that other stuff, and then out to the service. This here's the air pump. Air service valve you have open. There's a check valve. You charge it like this. This uh, air pump is original Chance Brothers also. Found sort of the whole package deal, which is interesting. So the tank, the pump, and the burner are all from the same old company. Lighthouse equipment is very rare, especially when you can find all the pieces. So, we've now got 50 pounds on the gauge. Usually I like to run the burner between 60 and 70, but this will be fine for a test run. Now that we're finished charging, shut air service cock. This is a thermal expansion joint for the airline, which will get hot from the compressing of air. This is an oil service gauge. So, ensuring the service valve and the purge valve are closed, open this main valve. There's your 50 pounds of oil service. Check to make sure there are no bubbles in the draw pipe through the purge cock and that you've got clean kerosene, which we do seem to. This valve is also used in shutting down the burner. Now we can ensure that the burner control cock is closed, which it is. So now we open up the service valve. Main valve is open, service valve is open. So now we have that compressed air pushing that kerosene up the draw pipe in the middle through this coaxially ported head that I made and the valve block that I made and out the service line. Now we move over to the burner. So for quite some time I've had the pre-burner going. You can see there's a fire in there. This is a denatured alcohol pan. And what we are doing now is we are preheating the vaporizing tubes which is essentially a kerosene boiler. It's been going for quite some time now so we should have those tubes red hot which is what you want. That's essentially a flash boiler for kerosene. We're going to crack, just crack the control and then close it to prime the tubes. We're going to get kerosene vapor coming out pretty well immediately. Which we then start with the torch. So that starts the illuminating fire. Now normally on top of that head, there would be a mantle. The mantle is uh, silk that's impregnated with zirconium or uh, thorium or a rare earth metal that glows very, very brightly when heated. That's what provides the light for the lens. Now, there's also a second fire, which should have started on the Bunsen burner underneath. And you can see those two blue lines, that's it. So I'm going to put the camera down and remove the pre-burner and get, that, uh, get this thing working under normal operation. So the burner is now running normally. While it's warming up still, it will surge up and down from time to time. Do your best to control it. This is the Bunsen fire, those two little blue lines of flame inside. And as I said, this would normally have a mantle on it. This is the head that fits around. It holds the mantle suspended from this hook. If this mantle was on there right now, that hook would actually be glowing red hot. The way this burner operates, Kerosene under pressure arrives from the service tank. 
usually through a copper line. When this is permanently installed, this will have a copper line. Right now, this is fuel hose. This is a control valve. It enters into essentially what is a flash boiler, a water tube boiler design, but for kerosene. There are three tubes. It passes through one, through another, and through a third in series until it reaches the jet. There are clean out plugs. Any vaporizing burner, whether it's a torch or this thing up to a steam car burner, will precipitate carbon when you boil kerosene. So those plugs can be removed to clean out the carbon buildup that accumulates inside those tubes. The jet is much like a jet on a torch. It's the same type of thing you have in one of these. A jet of vapor leaves that at high velocity in a cone shape. It entrains, the reason it's out in the open like this is because it entrains air with it as it's exiting the orifice. And that air and kerosene vapor mixture enters this port at just above atmospheric pressure with a good deal of velocity. It goes in there into a, into a chamber, which is sealed, except at the top. It leaves the chamber through a series of screen baffles to create this fire here. It also travels from that chamber down two tubes to a perforated tube, which forms the Bunsen burner. The perforations are where that kerosene burner, uh, kerosene vapor and air mixture leave, and it burns very, very nicely right on top of those perforations on that little, little blue line, which keeps that kerosene vaporizer heated. Those little blue flames are a lot hotter than you think they are, and uh, they keep those tubes a dull red hot, which I'm not sure you can see on this camera. This burner right now, it's not surging anymore. It's operating stably. If there was a mantle on top of there, this, uh, this camera would be pretty much blinded by an intense white light. And that white light, uh, this burner would sit inside of a giant Fresnel lens of a first order size and project that light. 20 miles to the horizon for the safety of all ships at sea. This is also quite a rare piece of history because, as I said before, there are only about 30 of these burners left on planet Earth. Uh, very few of them run. I've had my hands on the one uh, down in the Bahamas in the tower at Elbow Key. That one is in its lens, in its lighthouse, right where it belongs. This one is owned by David Waller, who graciously let me work on it and bring it back to service for the Fresnel lens that he owns that we are going to hopefully be putting in the Graves Point Lighthouse, which he owns. Uh, this is a very rare sight. I do not think there are any other burners of a first order size currently operable anywhere in the world, although someone could probably correct me on that. Uh, if there are, there's only one or two possible candidates. The one in the Bahamas is a third-order sized burner being used in a first-order lens.